Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Fired Up with CJ show. We're talking to Michael Gardner about his book, In Search of Lost Lives, Desire, Sanskaras, and the Evolution of a Mind and Soul. And so we've talked already about a mind and soul. We've talked about your desire and talents and, and kind of how, you, how those may be actually coming from past lives. And then we haven't touched upon sanskara. So First of all, for those who are not familiar with the word, what is a what is a sanskara? A sanskara is a an impression from a past life. It's something that comes through. Uh, it can be all, all kinds of things. It can be an inherent talent or an ability. It can be an aversion. It can be deja vu, a feeling of real familiarity with the place. I've had quite a few very powerful. Uh, experiences of uh, deja vu. But it can also be inexplicable aversions. Uh, for instance, all my life I, I had an, an inexplicable aversion to the countries of Spain and China. Well, when I recovered my past lives, I asked, where did, where did this come from? It just doesn't make sense. I'm widely traveled. I've been to over 50 countries. I didn't have the aversion to Spain and Southern Spain because it was kind of different. Well, as it turns out, I was a professor at Cambridge uh, like 14 lives ago, and I was a professor of life sciences. And one of my uh, best instructor friends was a professor of, of like languages who was Jewish, but he didn't, he was sort of a Jewish in hiding. And he told me all these graphic stories of how Jews were tortured in the Inquisition and afterwards, mm -hmm. just horrible things that happened. And that formed, and the lifetime before that, interestingly, CJ, I was a Jew in Poland. I was an Orthodox Jew who mm. didn't fit into the community. I was actually ostracized. Well, in that life in Cambridge as an instructor, I formed this aversion to Spain. Now, once I recovered it, when I recovered the past lives and what happened, that aversion dissipated, it evanesced. I mm -hmm. no longer have it because I went again to Spain, all over Spain, and I loved it. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Now, I also had a, now speaking of Jews, I also had this aversion to seeing Orthodox Jews, which is kind of weird because, um, you know. Yeah, well, where'd that come from? Where does that come from? I mean, and I would get, you know, I'd be walking around Palm Springs and I'd see a group of eight of them walking together and I just would get angry. I'm never an angry person. Right. Well, it turns out that lifetime before I was a professor at Cambridge, I was a very, very poor Jewish guy in Poland uh, from a big family with completely dysfunctional parents, spent my whole life trying to get married. My matchmaker gave up on me, but all these, you know, leaders of the community ostracized me. They didn't want anything to do with me. Oh. And that lifetime I committed suicide, by the way. Wow. Which was really, really heavy. I wasn't supposed to do that. I felt so lonely and abject. Mm. But I mean, the golden lining of that lifetime, there was one elder who took me under his wing. And when he died, I inherited his whole library. I worked as a translator, mainly for lonely widows. I was translating like French books into Polish or Yiddish. Yeah. Well, this elder, you know, gray bearded elder is a friend of mine this lifetime. I mean, I, I can kind of get into that whole story, but that's what I work on. I thought, where do I know her from? Because she's always had a very protective attitude toward me. I mean, I'm mainly friends with her husband, but the context we've had, she's been very protective and solicitous. And she was that lifetime. She was the only person who looked out for me and cared for me. So, wow. all, so the point of this is all these feelings, all these intimations wow. that we have, they all make sense. I mean, when I recovered that life, uh, when I was a slave, it was from a particular experience of 
you know, missing my mother, uh, being a slave, just when I was tasting myself as a, as a year. Yeah, so it's, so, it's, so, so the, some scars are these little remnants or traces from past lives, which translate into an aversion of Spain and kind of like, or Orthodox Jews and saying, I'm not sure why, like why this makes no logical sense. So it was those kinds of things that didn't, it's your curiosity, like, why am I like this? That then led you down a path of understanding a past life and going, ah, this is why I'm mm -hmm. like this. And it sounds like when you were able to investigate and understand, you released and that aversion and were able to travel to Spain. Yes, to Spain, for instance. Yeah. yeah. And, and tell mean, me a little bit. Oh, so ahead. gratifying about this is that everything I wondered about now makes sense. And every, right. you know, the world seems so crazy and unfair and cruel. But it all makes sense uh, when you gain that higher consciousness. Right. And then the last part you talked about, so you talked about um, in the first segment about familiarity. So you're like, that person just seems familiar and I'm not sure why. And you talked about your friend's wife. You're like, she seems familiar. So it was just the curiosity that drove you to think, well, how do I, why is she so protective of me? I barely, I don't, I don't even, I'm not really even friends with her. I'm friends with her husband, but it's those kinds of things or why is it that I felt that way when I saw those Orthodox Jews? Like it's those kind of curiosities and asking the question that then would lead you to past life. How about deja vu? Well, yeah, um, <clears throat> the most powerful deja vu I had actually was when I was visiting Bombay, uh, staying in Juhu Beach in a hotel. And I'd been there actually many times, but it was my very last visit I was walking back from a venue and I went, I took a turn I'd never taken before. And all of a sudden um, I saw like this row of Victorian houses with this arch and a sign metaphysical society. Hmm. And it was like, I got dizzy. I could almost not stand up. And it was like, I used to live here. And I was like trying to remember the neighbors, you know, it was so powerful. And then I later recovered. That's where I lived when I was stationed uh, during the British Raj. As, oh, as a oh but, wow. Yeah, but Hong Kong, I, you know, I absolutely adore Hong Kong. Well, I took a round the world trip after that tour and, I, and old Hong Kong and old Singapore were both utterly familiar. And, and that's why. And even, uh, you know, I grew up in Marin County, California, but the first time I went to Occidental, I had that feeling, I've been here before. Why is this so familiar? Mm. Well, I stopped in San Francisco and then, you know, took the ferry to Marin and there was a train that went all the way up to Occidental in Sonoma County. Mm. So I was there like in its early days. Mm. So these feelings of deja vu, you, you really, it's good to pay attention to them. They're, they're right. doors into your past. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so we've been talking to um, Michael Garter about um, sanskaras and how those deja vus, feeling of familiarity where you think I get along so well with this person. In fact, I have a complete aversion to this person. <laughs> um, getting curious about why, because most likely it's a past life that you've had and to dig into it and how understanding that helps to understand your soul's evolution, where you've been and who you are and why you like, dislike, and um, why things seem familiar or disfamiliar, um, or I don't even know if that's a word, disfamiliar. I don't think it is, unfamiliar. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Michael. Thank you, it was a delight being with you, CJ.